How's it going? This video is going to be on orthostatic hypotension. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how orthostatic hypotension is defined, what the pathophysiology is, what some of the symptoms are, and then I'll just talk a little bit about how to manage it. So orthostatic hypotension is a form of low blood pressure, and it occurs when you go from sitting or lying to standing up. This occurs because when you stand up quickly, gravity causes the blood to pool in your legs. And this momentarily reduces blood flow to the brain. So when this happens to someone, the reduced blood flow causes them to feel dizzy or lightheaded or possibly even faint. So the symptoms that the patients experience is a result of the hypoperfusion, low flow, from the low blood pressure. So the hypoperfusion to the brain leads to dizziness, lightheadedness, cognitive slowing, and then possibly even syncope. And then the hyperperfusion to the retina or the visual pathway can cause a blurriness or dim vision. So if a patient comes in and says, you know, when I stand up, I feel dizzy or I sort of lose my vision, then you should definitely be thinking about orthostatic hypotension. So it's important to know how you measure it and how you diagnose it. Whenever I have to measure orthostatic blood pressure, I Google measuring orthostatic blood pressure PDF and then I just click on the first one and print it out. And then I just follow exactly what it tells me. So you have the patient lie down for five minutes. And if you're in a location where lying down is impossible, sitting is okay too. It'll just miss a few cases. So you have them lie down for five minutes and you check the blood pressure and the pulse. And then you have them stand and you repeat the blood pressure and pulse measurements at one minute of them standing and then three minutes of them standing. So if after three minutes, the patient has a drop of 20 in the systolic or 10 in the diastolic, then the diagnosis of orthostatic hypotension is made. So the three minute measurement is what's used for the diagnosis, but the one minute measurement is valuable in assessing a person's response to standing up. So while the one minute measurement isn't in the primary diagnostic criteria, the drop that you see in the one minute mark provides very valuable clinical information. Now, let's move a little bit into the details of the pathophysiology of orthostatic hypotension. So when you go from sitting or lying to standing up, gravity causes the blood to pool in the lower extremities. So if the blood is in the lower extremities, the legs, that means there's going to be less blood available for the heart to be pumping, which the fancy term for this is cardiac output. So that means there's going to be less blood circulating throughout the rest of the body. So we have what are called baroreceptors in the aorta and the carotid arteries, and they're measuring blood pressure at all times. And when they detect a change in blood pressure, they say, hey body, we gotta make some changes to normalize this. So if they detect a low blood pressure, they make two big changes to raise it. So one, they constrict the blood vessels, and two, they increase the heart rate. And this is done by activating the sympathetic nervous system. So the key mechanism that causes the blood vessels to constrict involves release of the neurotransmitter norepinephrine and its interaction with the alpha adrenergic receptor, alpha-1. So to recap all that, when you go from lying down to standing up, some of the blood pools in your legs, which causes a drop in the blood pressure. Detectors in the aorta and the carotid arteries detect this drop in blood pressure, and they activate the sympathetic nervous system in an effort to normalize the blood pressure. This leads to norepinephrine binding to postsynaptic alpha-1 receptors on vascular smooth muscle cells. This binding leads to contraction of smooth muscle cells on the blood vessels, which leads them to constrict. And this constriction causes an increased blood pressure. In addition to this, there's an acceleration of the heart rate. And this is mediated by postsynaptic myocardial beta-1 receptors. Sorry, I know that was a lot. So let's just make it much simpler. Standing up causes your blood pressure to drop. And your body fixes this by constricting blood vessels and increasing your heart rate. That's not too complicated. So orthostatic hypotension is just when your body, for whatever reason, has difficulty compensating for that reduction in blood pressure that occurs when you stand up. So the reason that this is especially relevant in psychiatry is because we use a lot of medications that block the alpha-1 receptor. So if this receptor is blocked, that means your body can't use one of its main mechanisms for normalizing blood pressure after postural changes. So it's common when we start patients on medications with alpha-1 blockade that when they stand up, they get dizzy or lightheaded or lose their vision. And it's not uncommon for patients to develop a sinus tachycardia as a result of this blockade. So this reflects an adequate autonomic reflex. And sometimes elderly patients don't have this increase in heart rate 
and that's because the elderly patients have baroreceptors that are less sensitive to changes in blood pressure. So what are some of the important things to know about management of orthostatic hypotension? So the first and most important thing is education and counseling. It's important to give the patients a simple description of what's going on. You don't need to go into detail about alpha-1 and baroreceptors. It's important that you make it digestible to the patient. And it's important to counsel them on warning symptoms and avoidance of triggering events. So let them know if they ever change their posture, they should do it slowly and carefully. And tell them that when they get up, make sure they give their body time to adjust. If they're lying down, maybe sit up for a bit and then stand up slowly while holding on to something or waiting a bit before you start walking. It's also important to counsel patients to not try to just push through it. So if they start experiencing symptoms, don't push through it. They should be sitting or lying down immediately. A little bit of embarrassment is much better than falling or passing out. So you can teach them measures that decrease venous pooling in the lower extremities. So here you can talk to them about the importance of not standing for long periods of time, the importance of not standing still after exercise, and you can teach them counter maneuvers that increase their blood pressure when they're standing. Things like crossing their legs, placing a foot on a chair, squatting, or crossing your legs when you're sitting. So what these maneuvers do is tense the leg muscles to pump the blood out of the veins and out of the lower extremities. And you should also emphasize that the patient should actively prevent dehydration, which can worsen orthostatic hypotension. And one thing that might be helpful is drinking a lot of water quickly, which is like a bolus of water. So if they rapidly drink 16 ounces of water, typically their blood pressure will start to improve in about 5 to 10 minutes. And I've read that the benefit here is due to the hypotonicity of water. So therefore, they should be chugging plain water and not an electrolyte drink, if they can. Another thing that can be helpful is to counsel the patient to eat frequent small meals and decrease alcohol intake, especially avoiding large carbohydrate-rich meals. So especially older patients or patients with Parkinson's disease, diabetes, or autonomic nervous system disorders, they can experience postprandial hypotension, which refers to a drop in blood pressure after eating. So that's what you're trying to avoid by eating frequent small meals. Another thing that can help is increased dietary salt. But of course, this is provided there's no contraindications to increasing your salt intake. But salt promotes volume expansion. So salt can be increased by increasing the intake of salty foods, or eating salt tablets. And then in regards to changes that the provider can make, it's really important to do a medication review. So take a look to see if the patient's on any medications that can worsen orthostatic hypotension. And of course, you need to do risk benefit here, but you can consider reducing the dose or changing the frequency of one of the medications. And one step that you can do to reduce the orthostatic hypotension is to minimize the peak level of the medication. So if it's possible, change the medication to sustain release prep or give the patient multiple doses throughout the day. Another thing that can help is abdominal binders and lower extremity compression. So abdominal binders and lower extremity compressions exert pressure on the veins and this helps to push blood back up to the heart. Hello, I am the creator of Psychopharm. I'm here today to announce the Psychopharm Antidepressant Psychopharmacology course. I've put what can only be described as a stupid amount of time into making this course. I learned a new software so that the graphics are nice and clean. Um, I've put all my free time into making these videos. I'm covering a lot in this course. It's going to go over kind of the basics of treating depression. It's going to go over the SSRIs, the SNRIs, the MAOIs, the TCAs, and some of the atypical antidepressants. I really appreciate all the support. If you can share this with people who you think would be interested in this course, I would really appreciate it. If this goes okay, then I can justify continuing to spend so much time on making this stuff, and I hope to eventually move to an antipsychotic course, a mood stabilizer course. Um, I have a lot of ideas, I just need to justify using all this time on these projects. Thank you for watching, thank you for considering, um, have a good day.